The 2022 appropriation tagged budget of economic growth and sustainability is now before the National Assembly. With a total expenditure of 16.39 trillion naira, this is the last full year budget to be implemented by the Buhari administration. Now, the president, while presenting the budget to the National Assembly, indicated that it is designed to build on the achievements of previous budgets and to deliver on the goals and aspirations to be reflected in the soon-to-be-launched National Development Plan of 2021 to 2025. The 2022 appropriation has a conservative oil price benchmark of 57 US dollars per barrel, and daily oil production estimate of 1.88 million barrels per day. Now, exchange rate is estimated at 410.15 Naira per US dollar, with a projected GDP growth rate of 4.2% and 13% inflation rate. Now, based on these fiscal assumptions and parameters, total federally collectible revenue is estimated at 17.70 uh, trillion Naira in 2022. The allocations to MDAs, Mr. President says, are guided by the strategic objectives of the National Development Plan of 2021 to 2025, which includes diversifying the economy with robust MSME growth, investing in critical infrastructure, strengthening security and ensuring good governance, enabling a vi vibrant, educated and healthy populace, reducing poverty and minimizing regional economic and social disparities. So what are the prospects and possible challenges of the 2022 appropriation bill? This is our focus on Nigeria today. Welcome to the program. I'm Victor Azu. All right, and joining me to provide more insight into the 2022 appropriation bill is Yushawa Liu. He is an economist. Welcome to Nigeria today, Yishao. Thank you very much. And I've also been joined by the, uh, an investment promotion expert, Obun Naokuku. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, let's begin a a against its tag of uh, budget of economic growth and sustainability. What's your assessment of the 2022 appropriation bill, Yishao? Uh, my assessment of this uh, presented uh, budget to the National Assembly is timely, that is one, two, and unique in nature. It is unique in nature based on the fact that the President highlighted a lot of issues. One of the fundamental issues he highlighted is that it is, one of, is, it is going to be the last budget to be presented to the National Assembly, so there is much hope by the APC government and there is also much determination by the policy makers in an attempt to make use of a lot of parameters but the second aspect at which i wanted to uh, speak is the dollar rate which has been pegged as 57 so and, and at the same time president highlighted the issue of inflation now presently as we are presented this program, the inflation is above 17 percent. But the president highlighted that it is a hope that within that same 2022, we are expecting inflation to be as, uh, to, 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 to a barest minimum of about 13 percent. Okay. And that is not going to be much realistic due to the fact that the dwindling uh, aspect of which our exchange rate is floating in the market that is one second the insecurity aspect to which has hindered a lot of supplies Indeed. in the market and at the same time the increase in gasoline price worldwide which nigeria is still importing pms and that importation has to do with international pricing okay now, there, there will be a lot to talk about indeed uh, as we delve into uh, most of the major issues. But meanwhile, Abuna, do you agree with uh, Yushao's submission or there's something you want to add? I, I would just love to add here is uh, what I would like to add here is the first most important thing for me is 
the growth that the president highlighted he said something about SM, msme growth now for me that is actually what would actually the that is what grows at any economy all over the world so if you must grow your economy which is it is priority for us as a nation as the president has said it that you must have your msme work mm -hmm. and for that to work you must have a skilled workforce and you must have um you must have um a, a well tailored sector specific um uh, uh, te technology transfer strategy you must have your raw material supply strategy all in place and then have a, a, a financial engineering that will work and then will help some of these msmes grow because they are the ones that create the employment that is required so basically if that has become priority for the nation it means that we mean business and we must grow this economy so some of most of the projections highlighted there is based on the fact that there's going to be a whole lot of inf investment towards things that will help grow the msmes because without without good infrastructure msmes won't grow so that is why you see a lot of funds are going to go in there and then you must provide security which is what the president has highlighted in that budget in presentation all right. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Obona, for your opening shots. And just like you said, security has been given priority, talking about defense and generally security sector in that uh, 2022 appropriation bill. What does this uh, signify, Yushao? Uh, it signifies a lot of issues. And at the same time, also, when you take into consideration the MS uh, medium scale enterprises in Nigeria and the challenges they are facing, especially when you take a look of United Nations ease of doing business standard. Security is fundamental. And that security, President highlighted categorically that he is intending to see how this can be uh, contained within a minimum uh, period. But okay. two issues are involved. One, the enabling environment. Once you are talking of MS uh, uh, medium small enterprises, you are talking about Nigeria as a, as, as a whole. And when you now uh, categorically look at Nigeria and you look at the critical infrastructure that the president is talking, especially roads network. Road network cannot be uh, underemphasized when you are talking of the growth of these small enterprises that are located within 774 local government in Nigeria. And at the same time also, the security funding, President emphasized so much on diversifying the economy. By diversifying the economy, the President is making emphasis on agriculture. So most of the medium enterprises that we are expecting to have the GDP growth of this economy are located uh, uh, mostly in rural areas. And these rural areas are most challenged now. So and it is important for us to also look at one consideration that the president made in his speech, that uh, uh, there is going to be much investment in power. There is also going to be much investment, not only in power, but in critical infrastructures, when critical infrastructures are mentioned, President highlighted some of these. Rail development. In rail development, we are expecting most of these rail projects that are commissioned by the President, either from the South South or from the North East, are completed because he gave emphasis that it is his own target that most of this uh, investment or most of this critical work that is going on under the Ministry of Power are completed within the frame of his own administration. Now, there seems to be a lot of uh, priorities as it is. What multiplier effects can we expect from all of these, Obunna? Yeah, see, the, the, the growth, you know, is simply when you begin to, or productivity is simply when you begin to solve complexity within a system. Mm -hmm. Now, if emphasis are on MSME growth, diversifying the economy, how to increase our revenue as a nation, how to develop agriculture and add value to you know, some of the things that we produce, which is actually what I talked about earlier, the raw material supply strategy to industries. So industrialization as a whole has to have um, you know has to have you know corners where you need to fill up. As soon as you fill up those corners, things begin to work. Now, access to market 
is very critical. And then without, without you know, good infrastructure, just like my colleague said here, it will be difficult for you to have access to market. Mm -hmm. But one thing also that is very key that we must look at here is how to fund most of these MSMEs. Now, there's what they call bootstrapping, which is always one of my biggest concerns. Mm -hmm. Now, if development finance institutions within the space or within Nigeria are not given, you know, mandate or given a target to make sure they fund a large percentage of the MSMEs, it becomes this, it becomes an issue. I say this because you can't merge. You can't make development finance uh, 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 strategy with commercial bank, you know, uh, models, which is what happens most of the time. Most of the, you know, you know, most of the uh, development finance institutions would al always require you to bring a collateral from a commercial bank. These are things that should, you know, these are things that, you know, policymakers should make sure that they don't happen any, they, they don't happen anymore. We need to begin to develop, you know, have a financial engineering strategy or structure that would also support most of these MSMEs. So really, the multiplier effect is enormous. You know, that you are going to take a lot of young people out of the street. The population of the country is growing. Uh, you know, uh, 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 you know. Uh, you know, at, at a very high level. So we need to, you know, create opportunities and make the, uh, the economy a bit more robust. We need to attract a lot more investment into, you know, you know businesses that are actually, you know, you know, propel the, the growth on, uh, of the nation. So basically, the multiplier effect is, a, is, a, is enormous. Now, let's talk about the assumptions, you shall. How realistic... Uh, of course, when you talk of assumption, looking at the parameter set, the first thing you look is the oil production because the economy depends so much on oil and it Indeed. is put at 1.88 million barrels per day. It's a good start, especially with our own OPEC agreeing for us to produce that and supply into international market. Uh, but the second aspect at which we pegged uh, $57 as a yastic to measure our income up to about 10 points uh, something trillion uh, yeah. that is coming to to, to 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 finance the budget that amount of money i think the national assembly need to make a slight adjustment look at the current price at which the 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 the, 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 the light crude is sells in the market mm -hmm. the, there is it is important to make that little adjustment little adjustment of even single dollar to move from 57. The reason why we must move from 57 is to reduce the deficit. When we okay. are, when the deficit is mentioned above 5 trillion, then there is need to look at the projected revenue and slightly add a single dollar. That single dollar will reduce the deficit to about uh, 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 maybe le le less than 500 billion dollar naira. So that will help the economy. And at the same time also, if we look at the other assumption that probably exchange rate will remain at 410 that 410 uh, uh in the in the short run it cannot work and even in the long run looking at the volatility of the exchange uh, the, the foreign exchange as it is uh, appearing in, in in the parallel market so yeah, and, and at the same time also we look at 2022 is going to be a year of election, electioneering. Yeah. And we know what normally happens when electioneering is coming. That is when you see people demanding so much currencies for political reasons. And that is when we see a lot of people also going for the foreign exchange for other businesses, especially okay. the do dollarization aspect. Okay. We will refer to all of this uh, later on. Uh, on the program but for now let's pause and uh, take a quick break just so that we can take a brief uh, nigeria today returns shortly
Right, welcome back. If you've just tuned in, not to worry, you're right on time. We have been discussing the 2022 appropriation with Yushawa Liu, an economist, and Obuna Okuku, an investment promotion expert. Let's talk other aspects of the appropriation now. For the first time, gender inclusion is taken into cognizance in its uh, preparation process. What do you make of this, and what impact is it likely to make, Obunda? It, it just sent um, a good signal out there to, you know, for us to understand that there are people who are weaker, you know, whether we like it or not. The weaker gender must be considered whether in whatever decisions that we take. So it also goes to show that we are beginning to, you know, marry some of the protocols that we go to sign with the UN and other bodies all over the world, things that were signatories to, some of these protocols that were signatories to. So some of these considera considerations are, you know, appearing, showing up in our budget means that, you know, you know, good considerations are being made towards making sure that the female gender is being carried along and all of that. But having said that, it's also key for, all, you know, you see, when, when, when the presidency said the you know the, the tone it means that he has to move down to the, the subnationals everybody needs mm -hmm. to understand or even you know other everybody needs to understand that this is a consideration that we must make and then for a better tomorrow because they say when you support the women you support the nation then again if we if we do that then it also shows that we are beginning to consider the younger ones the youth and all of that is also being considered here so I, I think is a is a is a good is a is the right step in the right direction and then since that the president have made this move so i believe that every other person will follow suit and make sure that we implement it to the latter all right thank you very much indeed now the issue of uh, funding deficits remains you shall made uh, alluded to it uh, earlier how should it then be tackled given the current economic realities you shall uh, mr president was highly sympathetic to nigerians because he has noted the concerns of nigerians about borrowing to finance the deficit. But one thing in economics, one thing that has to do with public finance, is that a borrowing is a window and it must okay. be utilized properly. If you don't utilize it properly, there is a I danger. Really thank you to much more debt. Excellent. So, uh, so, so the concern that I have is one. What the, it is important to borrow. It is important to fund an economy that was devastated by COVID-19 pandemic. And the pres uh, Mr. President made categorical statement on mm -hmm. in an attempt to save an economy that is so devastating, you must use all angles to finance, to create finance, and to also to create uh, an environment where uh, critical infrastructures will be attended. And that is a window. But my concern is the volume of deficit that is one mm -hmm. two volume of debt servicing within the same budget provision Indeed. when you look at the two you have to balance you have to strike a balance at the income that is the revenue mr president was categorical government on enterprises about 61 are going to be funding this budget for the first time very good two the president has not highlighted the issue of non-remittance, which is very, very significant. Okay. And I think uh, it is important for revenue generating agencies or the revenue collection uh, institution to be more proactive to assist the deficit. Because when we don't collect internally generated revenue, it makes it we are not helping the economy. And we are not helping the GDP rate to debt to our nation. And even when we are operating at a more normal uh, situation, that is, we are comfortable. We, are, we assume we are comfortable. Mm -hmm. We assume we have another strength to get additional fund into the economy. But what should we, what we should agree is the sacrifices the economy to be making up to th five, sorry, up to about four trillion going for debt servicing. It's so great and mm -hmm. animals. And that is why sometimes when you look at deficit, we have to contain it. And that is why I made a proposal that in an attempt to contain this high deficit, or the projection of $57 per barrel, which is not the current price in the world market, has to be adjusted with a single dollar. 
That single dollar mean much to, to our deficit uh, 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 attention. Okay. I would, have, the, the, I would the, have loved to add something to where he... Okay. Where the he, issue of deficit, I just wanted to say, yeah. is also a concern that the leadership of the National Assembly has also raised. But, so, Bona... You see, uh, whether we like it or not, we need to also... I've come to realize that over the past two, three decades, mm -hmm. you know, policymakers have also... have always looked at... Um, you know, have been erroneously seen um, uh, uh, entrepreneurship to sole proprietorship or look, looked at them as, as the same, or whenever you talk about entrepreneurship, you're talking about uh, the private sector. No. Entrepreneurship is actually how you do things, the process mm -hmm. to which you do things. So most of these MDAs, their leadership must be put on their toes to make sure they become entrepreneurial. They begin to think out of the box. They need to begin to create fun, you know, wealth for the nation. They, let them realize that we're not in government not to, you know, to make monies for themselves, but to make money for the, kin for, 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 for the gains of the nation. Because if you have some paraphernalia given to you as a government, you should be able to think out of the box to see where you can make proposals to the government that I can generate m this kind of uh, you know revenue for the nation because if we leave that to just those uh, agencies like NMPC, leave it to FIRS and the the, the known ones, it, I mean it, it won't get us anywhere because I mean whether we like it or not, if you go to other clients, you will see agencies, you see uh, you know government owned agents, uh, you know government uh, owned uh, uh, parasitals making monies for the nation because we yeah. need to generate resources to, to fund our budget. Now, now, well, now, let me ask you this. Yeah. The president had talked about um, diversification on one hand. On the other hand, the oil and gas sector, especially the Petroleum Industry Act, is expected uh, to play a critical role in economic stability. Do you think that this is likely to go as planned? How much can this do? Now, see, whether we like it or not, we can't throw oil away. Oil has to still be there because we've not even been able to get the mm -hmm. benefits that is inherent in oil. I, in economic development, they are all called lifelines. So if a particular lifeline have not been used to the maximum, that is why the, the act has come into, you know, you know, come into play and then it's mm -hmm. going to attract a whole lot of investment. You know, because one of the things that investors look at is actually efficiency in the system. Yeah. If they are, can't see efficiency, they, it becomes a bit difficult for them to put their money in, especially pri you know, pri pri when, when these monies are owned by you know, private people. So yeah. because they also have a thinking, every investor, they all have a way that they reason. They all see, they, they hold their monies at like egg, so they don't want anything to happen to their money. So with that bill coming into play is going to help a lot you know people will see transparent you know a process and you know begin yeah. to want to come and play in the economy then coming to diversification if you want to diversify your economy a lot of things have to come which is one of the most important critical thing that the president have mentioned we yeah. must have basic infrastructure you cannot do for example why are we not talking about solid minerals today we are not talking about solid minerals because these are heavy metals that you can't you you can't ply them on the road yeah. you must have your railway because I walking. mean, yeah, walking. So this is why we are borrowing a whole lot of money to put into the railway to, the to railway. make sure if you want to jumpstart that sector. So basically, whether we like it or not, we have to take certain decisions, critical decisions at this point in time, uh, so that tomorrow we'll have enough funding to even finance our budget, then pay off some of these debts. As far as as far as I'm concerned. So right. whether we like it or not, we are actually we don't have you know much alternatives these are the only things available and we must follow them suit and make sure that we get them to work all right as we begin to count down now that the spending plan is before the national assembly in october what does it signify and what can be expected in the 2022 fiscal year you shall please make it brief. Uh, uh, i i love the situation at the national assembly today because like i always comment is that Today, National Assembly is so calm and also show their readiness. And the president has applauded their effort in passing the even the, the, the supplementary budget. Mm -hmm. But what is more important about this timing is that we, should, we must look at the, okay. that deficit you mentioned. Importing PMS is what is causing so much petrodollars getting out of our hand from our proceed. So there must be an emphasis to make these refineries working, to make Nigeria be saving money and at the same time reduce the deficit. National Assembly, congratulations for accepting this 2022 budget, but we are expecting you to be up and doing and to monitor it to conclusion. 
All right, Yushao Aliu, economist, we thank you for your time and expertise on the program. Thank you very much. And Abuna Okuku, an investment promotion expert, thank you very much for finding time to join us. Much appreciated. All right, thanks for having me. Now, don't forget, Nigeria Today is live weekdays at 7.30 in the evening. Meanwhile, you can watch this and other editions at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News 24 Hub. I'm Victor Azu. I'll see you next time.